Lucius is a young, impressionable boy who lacks conviction and is unsure of his future goals. Following the death of his father in a scaffolding accident, Lucius now resides with his grandfather and mother. He is taken to a bathhouse where his grandfather explains that he designed it and that Lucius' father renovated it. In an effort to get away from Titus, who frequently bullies him, he dives underwater, but somehow manages to teleport to a different bathhouse. He hits his head in a fit of panic, knocking him back. Lucius hears from his grandfather about the significance of bathhouses in Rome and how they uplift the spirit and physical well-being of their patrons. After Titus disparages his family's legacy, he becomes convinced and decides to follow in the footsteps of his father and become a Thermi architect. He should use his bathhouses to treat people, his proud grandfather advises. Years later, Lucius is an adult and an architect who has returned to Rome to carry on his family's tradition and construct bathhouses. He completed his studies in Athens. When they meet in the bathroom, Titus expresses regret for disrespecting his family's labors. Rome grew in size and prosperity in 128 at under the rule of the Emperor Hadrian. In order to win the title of best architect during this era of peace known as Pax Romana, new architects compete with one another and introduce new innovations. Lucius, however, finds it difficult to come up with fresh concepts for Thermi architecture. His outdated ideas cause him to lose his job. He experiences a depressive episode and decides to leave the architectural field. Along with his friend Marcus, he visits a bathhouse where he is impressed by the Thermi's architecture. He goes under the water while wondering if he will ever have new, creative ideas for bathhouses. He stumbles upon a drain and is sucked inside. After emerging from the water, he discovers himself in a brand new bathhouse in contemporary Japan. Since he does not speak their language, he assumes it is a slave bathhouse. He is astounded by the new innovations and decides to use them in Rome in an effort to win over the populace's admiration. He tries a fruit-flavored milk beverage and absolutely adores it. When he wakes up, he thinks it was all a dream, but when he sees the drink's bottle, he quickly realizes it wasn't. Even though he feels like there is still so much to learn, he later puts the new concepts into practice and becomes a well-known architect. When he learns the drain is being destroyed, he makes the decision to return for fresh inspiration. Lucius Modestus is seen drinking with Marcus after a number of years and appears dejected because his wife wants him to take a break. The consul Lepidus sends Lucius a letter asking for his help with a pressing situation. The consul orders him to appear at his villa the following day, but Lucius understands that his wife would be upset with him because they had already made arrangements. The following morning when he arrives at the villa, he meets an elderly man named Lepidus who is ill. Lepidus asked Lucius to construct an outdoor bath for him so he could spend the remainder of his days. Because of the stunning Mount Vesuvius painting he saw in one of Lucius' thermi, he prefers to take his bath outside. He wants to spend the rest of his time in his bathhouse gazing at the actual Mount Vesuvius. He gives the Thermi's construction much thought. Regulus informs him that he can access a natural spring for water. He tries to discover what is causing the warm water in the spring, but he accidentally steps into it and ends up back in Japan. He finds himself in a hot spring where there is a separate bath for humans and monkeys. He tries to learn as much as he can about this advanced civilization, and he considers whether swimming under the surface will allow him to arrive here whenever he wants. He learns how to construct an outdoor bathhouse by using a wooden pipe to drain water into the river. He tries a spring-boiled egg and declares it to be sick, enjoying it so much that he concedes the Romans were behind these people in development. He builds Lepidus a bathhouse right away, putting the ideas into action. After that, Lucius is astounded by Lepidus's recovery and his marriage. Lepidus claims that Lucius' plan to consume wine and eggs saved his life. The discovery of a monkey in the bathroom astounds Lucius. Marcus is one of the many stonemasons working on numerous sculptures of Antinous. The emperor's lover Antinous was slain by an alligator. Because his master can hardly walk and needs assistance, Marcus always takes him to the bathhouse. The idea of having an indoor bathhouse is mentioned by the old man, and Lucius thinks it is feasible. The strigil, a tool used to scrape dirt off one's body, is something that Lucius dives underwater to retrieve because he thinks it is antiquated and should be replaced with something more contemporary. He tries to stand back up but is unsuccessful. He finds himself in a bathtub in the modern era as the water becomes hotter. Soon after learning how the hot water is kept in the bathtub and realizing there is much more he doesn't know, he feels ashamed once more of their sophisticated technology. He arrives to assist the home's owner with his bath under the impression that he is the caretaker. As the elderly man shows him how to use the modern equipment, he is astounded by its sheer number. He receives a fizzy beverage, which he downs quickly. He gets up and returns with a scrubbing towel. When the emperor's messenger arrives to inspect Antinous' sculptures, he finds the indoor bathhouse that Lucius built. He informs the emperor because he is curious. The emperor decides to fly back from Egypt and meet Lucius after learning about this incredible invention. On his way to meet the emperor, Lucius is anxious and queasy. He enters the emperor's villa, which the emperor himself designed. His stomach begins to grumble once more, but he suppresses it. Lucius is in awe of the size and design of the emperor's moat when he visits his villa. He is informed that since no one is permitted to enter without incurring punishment, he is an exception and must see the emperor alone. 
he meets the Emperor, who comforts Lucius by praising his accomplishments. He informs Lucius that although the Senate is opposed to maintaining the status quo and expanding the realm, he is interested in doing so. He detests having to go outside to take a bath, so he wants Lucius to construct a private bathing room in his moat. Given that Apollodoro's works for the Emperor is an excellent architect, Lucius queries why he did not ask him for assistance. He is informed by Hadrian that Apollodoros is no longer employed by him because all of his theories are out of date. When Lucius enters the pool to try to determine where the water enters and leaves, he discovers that he has returned to Japan and is in a showroom's restroom. He runs into a woman who works in the showroom, and she describes the bathroom's cutting-edge technology. He notices a television and thinks it is an aquarium concealed within the walls. After using the toilet, he learns that it is automated and has an auto-flush feature. The Emperor is pleased with his recreation of what he has learned, and he invites Lucius to accompany him to Jerusalem. Lucius accepts, because Hadrian attempted to erect a new town in Jerusalem. The populace has been in upheaval for the past three years. Hadrian is currently in Jerusalem. The rebels poison the soldiers fighting in the war, but there is no bathhouse to aid in their recovery. With his new spring, Lucius is nearly finished. Lucius is praised by Apollodoros, who assures him that his grandfather would be pleased with him. In an effort to assist, Lucius slips and falls into the spring, injuring his back. He is forced to lie down because of his back pain when he awakens in a health spa. He observes that the ground is warm and that the lodge was constructed on geothermally heated ground. He learns that the lodge is for those who require physical healing, and that the warm ground is what makes this possible. He consumes stewed bamboo shoots and old sick, but he believes the latter to be poison. He believes they are trying to kill him even though they are giving him hot spring water to help him heal. The sodium in the water has a detoxifying effect. He recreates the healing lodge, and the soldiers are cured. The healing spa is solely responsible for their victory in the war, and Lucius is appointed as the emperor's sole architect. Lucius visits his wife when he returns to Rome. He stops at a tavern en route to Rome. He is repulsed by the tavern's shoddy service. Both the food and the restrooms need maintenance. While attempting to take a bath, he trips and hurts himself. He discovers himself in an inn with both males and female guests. He tries to flee after being startled. He is given a robe and instructed to spend the night in the inn. When he arrives back at the inn, he is welcomed warmly. He learns how to use chopsticks from a woman who works at the inn, and he relishes the meal. When shown his room, he learns that it doubles as a workspace and a sleeping area. He no longer experiences travel fatigue, and he feels much better and more at ease. Lucius rejects the employee's advances and returns to his own time. He updates the tavern using his knowledge. The emperor visits the tavern and enjoys the services provided. He learns that Lucius was responsible for them. Marcus and Titus discuss Lucius and the effects he had on the Thermi business. The bathhouse that his grandfather built and his father maintained is being repaired by Lucius. The owner is informed by Lucius that a complete renovation is necessary, but that the bathhouse will have to close because of weak sales. This is a result of some foreign soldiers who arrived and showed little respect for the bathhouse rules. He challenges the foreigners, but one of them punches him in the face, causing him to fall into the water. Now that he is back in Japan, he is moved by the people's devotion to and reverence for the bathhouses. In Japan, the soldiers are also teleported to a bathhouse, where they disturb the peace. They argue with Lucius, who becomes enraged by their behavior and chooses to duel one of them despite their equal skill levels. He uses the images on the wall to instruct them on how to use a bath properly. These images demonstrate the regulations, and foreign visitors are aware of proper bathhouse behavior. Lucius is back, and he orders Marcus to carve the laws into stone. Titus enters with his son, who wants to become an architect, and Marcus enters with a new stone. They choose to take a bath collectively. The Augustale Society, a group of malnourished slaves, calls on Lucius to help them with a the task. Marcus, who is with him, implores him to accept the position. They are introduced to the Augustale Society's president, taken to a public area, and given the bathhouse's plans. Lucius hesitates because his plan calls for the construction of a golden bathhouse with a lot of obscene details, but Marcus persuades him to accept the assignment. Lucius is skeptical that the populace will enjoy the golden bathhouse. He becomes enraged when the leader says that he can work for him after the emperor passes away. After reprimanding him, Lucius falls into the water. The Tsukumi Hot Spring Inn will undergo renovations to become a bathhouse with an ancient Roman theme. The owner has some crazy ideas that are not typical of bathhouses from ancient Rome. When Lucius first meets the architect, he decides to assist him. He rejects the idea and creates a brand new pattern for his shirt using the temple and the moon as his sources of inspiration. While washing his face, he teleports back. The renovation is a success because it successfully combines luxury and simplicity to give the property a traditional and western appearance in honor of Princess Diana. By using the same knowledge, Lucius creates a stunning bathhouse. Lucius alias Caesar is the name of the son that the emperor chooses to rule the empire. Lucius is asked by the senate to go to the emperor's estate. After learning that his wife had left him, he arrives at the villa in shock. When Lucius witnesses a man acting impolitely in public, he finds it repugnant. It turns out that this man is the emperor's son. To support Alias' claim to the throne, the emperor asks Lucius to construct a sizable bathhouse. 
He visits the Baths of Trajan to get ideas for the brand new bathhouse he is about to construct. At the bathhouse, he runs into Apollodoros, and they both enter, inquiring about advice that might be useful for his construction. Lucius. Lucius does not respect Alias because he is a womanizer, Apollodoros informs him. Children playing in the bathhouse interrupt them, so Lucius decides to be resourceful and construct a bathhouse where kids can play. A youngster attempting to jump over him strikes him. He reappears in a water park, where a woman strikes him right away. He learns that the waterfall is not intended for relaxation and that nudity is not permitted here. He realizes that each age group has a different pool, and he comes to the conclusion that it is a training facility. After trying out the massage chair, he is given a milk beverage with fruit flavoring. He chooses to test out the waterfall. In order to train them, he decides to construct a bathhouse with Marcus' assistance. The adults and kids begin to argue over the waterfall, but a boy by the name of Marcus ends the argument. Marcus is very smart, he understands how the slides and pool operate. He was selected to be the new emperor, but it is revealed that he is too young. Marcus is fully capable of ruling, in contrast to Alias who is only talented in making choices. The bathhouse was built because the emperor wanted the populace to have faith in Alias so that he could rule until Marcus was old enough to take over the empire. Alias devises a strategy that enables everyone to take pleasure in the waterfall. Everyone is content, and according to Lucius, Rome's future is secure. The Senate opposes Alias's rule because they think he will maintain Hadrianus's peaceful rule rather than enlarging their realms. In order to accomplish this, they decide to get rid of Lucius, who is still depressed over his wife leaving him. They plan to plot against the Emperor by sabotaging the bathhouses that make people happy. He is sent to the Mount Vesuvius hot spring by the Senate. Bandits attack him, but after learning that he wants to construct a bathhouse, they let him go. He enters the hot spring with the assistance of the bandits. Since Lucius had promised them a treasure, the bandits are not content with the hot spring. In the water, Lucius makes an appearance in Japan. He shows up in a mountain town and takes a kimono. By having a hot spring, as well as selling food and trinkets, the town makes a fortune. He returns the kimono and gives them real silver in exchange for their money. He goes into a store and purchases instant ramen. He enjoys the flavor and the instant nature of it. He uses cash to make his payment. With the assistance of the bandits, he establishes a town and places them in charge. As a reward, the Emperor successfully brings him and his wife back together. For more anime recap, click here to subscribe and watch more. Thanks for watching.